Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virtual Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Creatures to meet, it's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Virtual Small Fry School here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Taylor, and I am so happy that you have joined us here today. I am here with my friends, Alex who's running the camera, and all of our audio, and Rebecca and Isabella, who are also here. So we are wearing masks to stay safe. We will be hosting these live on YouTube every Tuesday at 11 a.m. here on Alaska Time at the Alaska Sea Life Center. If you have any questions today during our program, please feel free to use the text and text the phone number below in the description. And also for today's episode, if you want to prepare for the activity, you can print out the color page for the flatfish, or you can go ahead and get your burlap ready, a marker, a pair of scissors, and if you have googly eyes and any glue at home, feel free to use those as well, but they are not necessary. Last week on Virtual Small Fry School, Rebecca taught us all about how cool sharks are and how many senses they have. Sharks have five senses. Do you remember them? Yeah. They are hearing, smell, sight, taste, and touch. For hearing, sharks have these little ear holes that help them hear underwater and hear their prey or their food. For smell, sharks have nostrils on their snouts or their nose just like us, they can smell their prey from far away and know exactly where to swim to. For eyesight, sharks have eyes that look like they glow because of a cool membrane that is over them to help sharks see in dark, dark water. For the sense of taste for sharks, they often love to taste their food before they eat it, which is why sharks will sometimes take a bite of something and spit it out. And lastly is touch. Rebecca covered two types of touch for sharks yes, last week. The lateral line, which goes all the way from a shark's snout to the back of its tail fin, which helps sharks sense their surroundings. Also, sharks have these little tiny holes called the ampullae of Lorenzini that also are their part, are part for their touch. And Check out our friend being a shark. Thank you so much for submitting your photo. We love to see these. I'm here at the Shelf Life Habitat here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. And do you see any fish swimming behind me? Do you see any fish swimming like this? Yeah. These are walleye pollock. They are a fish here that we have at the Alaska Sea Life Center. But they're not our main focus for today. Do you see any fish that look like this? You may not be able to because they may be hiding in the sand, but they will swim like this. I don't see any behind me swimming currently, but that's okay. They love to hide. Can you move your hand like how a flatfish would, sit, would move? Yeah, thanks for doing it with me. Let's take a look more behind me. How about 
about this really awesome Pacific halibut. Can you say hi to my friend, the Pacific halibut? Flatfish have different body parts that help them survive. They have eyes just like you and me. Where are your eyes? Yeah, they're on your head. Can you find the flatfish's eyes? That's right. They have two eyes on one side of their body. When they are born, one eye is on either side of their body like a typical fish and then shortly after, one eye will move across and over to that same flat side. Why do you think their eyes are on the same side of their body? Right, because if their eyes were on different sides, one eye would be buried in the sand. How would they be able to see where they're going? This way, with their two eyes on top, they can see everything that they need to see. An easy way to look for flatfish is seeing their two eyes poking out of the sand. Can you help me find the flatfish hiding in the sand? There it is. Look how fun his eyes are. So cool. Oh, I just love flatfish. Flatfish also have mouths just like us too. Where's your mouth? That's right, mine's hiding underneath my mask. So we as humans eat using our hands, but flatfish do not have hands. So how do you think a flatfish eats? Here's a cool video of one of our aquarists here feeding all the flatfish behind me. Flatfish are known for having really, really large mouths. Can you open your mouth wide like our friend, the flatfish? Flatfish love to eat a whole bunch of things like shrimp, crabs, sea urchins, fish, and even squid and octopus. What do you like to eat? My favorite food is macaroni and cheese. Flatfish also love to hide in the sand, the mud, or the rocks. That way they can blend into their surroundings and protect themselves from predators or other animals that are trying to eat them. Let's take a closer look at a flatfish and see if we can tell the colors. What colors do you see on this flatfish? I see gray, brown, and white. Do the colors of the flatfish look like something that's in its home? Yeah, the sand. This is called camouflage, or how an animal blends in with its environment. Can you say camouflage? This is another animal that likes to camouflage. Do you know what kind of animal this is? It's an octopus. Watch how the octopus is going to go right up top and blend in like the coral. How about this awesome decorator crab? Look how cool that is. He loves to take the red algae and put it all over himself. Another form of camouflage. Those are my favorite, I think. What about this flatfish? Can you find where he's hiding? That's right, look at him. You can see his two eyes, like how you helped me earlier. Oh. Flatfish are so cool, especially the way that they swim. They just swim just like this. I still don't see, oh, there's one. Oh. <laughs> Hanging behind me. Thank you guys for learning about flatfish with me. We are now going to move over to our craft for today. So Alex, if you can hit me to the dot cam. Oh, it doesn't look like it is. Oh yeah, it looks like we're stuck. Hold on. That's one okay. Minute. We actually have a question already. Oh. Do you want to do that while I? Absolutely. All right, let me give you back.
back to your yeah. normal camera. Thank you for the questions, by the way, you guys. Yeah, so you mentioned that they can change their color to blend in. How do flatfish change their color? Oh, such a good question. Thank you for asking. So flatfish, just like other animals, have these really, really cool, tiny cells on their body. And they're called chromatophores. Now, that's a super, super big word. But chromatophores are what help them change color. So do you remember the flatfish that was hiding in the sand? And it was gray and brown and white? Yeah, so those chromatophores that are all over its body help them change colors. Okay, now back to the document camera. So for today's craft, you will need a piece of burlap, just like this. But if you don't have any burlap, no worries. If you printed out today's coloring page, that's also awesome. And you can find it in the description below if you need a reminder. I already colored mine, and I named him Frankie. So this is Frankie the flatfish. Do you see his eyes? Yeah, they're right here. Awesome. So back to the burlap. For today's activity, you will also need a marker. I found some googly eyes, so I'm going to use googly eyes as well. But if you don't have any googly eyes, that's so fine. You can use your marker and draw them on there. But if you're using googly eyes, you're going to need some glue. And if you're going to be coloring the sheet, you're going to need some crayons or markers or something to color with. So I'm going to move my googly eyes to the side. And I'm going to take my marker. Oh, you're also going to need a pair of scissors. Mine are hiding. But you will probably need an adult's help, so don't be afraid to ask them for help whenever we get to the cutting part. So, we are going to be drawing two shapes, an oval and a triangle. Do you know what an oval looks like? Yeah, it looks kind of like a circle, but it's a little bit longer. So, on our burlap, oval all the way and we are not going to connect part of the line just so that we can make a nice tail fin and I had mentioned that we were going to be drawing a triangle so back here we're going to be drawing kind of a half triangle if you will all right so this body looks similar to my friend Frankie the flatfish. Can you see? Close enough. So you can put the cap back on your marker, and either you can take your pair of scissors if you feel comfortable. If not, grab the help of your adult, and they can help you as well. And you're going to now cut all along the marker, the line that you just drew. While you're cutting, we have another question. Awesome. Uh, they bury themselves, and, and their eyes kind of stick up. A um, couple people curious, how are they burying themselves if they don't have, like, hands or anything? If they don't have hands. Yeah. That's a great question. Thank you so much for texting us. So, right, flatfish do not have hands, but they have fins, right? So they can take their fins and flick sand all along their backs and they can bury themselves. And guess what? It takes like five to eight seconds, which is not that long at all. So fast and so cool. Then you can see their two eyes just poking out of the sand. Great question, thank you. So once you have cut out your fish, you can take your excess burlap and set it off to the side going to be a little messy, so make sure you help clean that a little bit later. And I dropped one of my googly eyes. But first, for the flatfish, I'm going to turn mine upside down so it, we don't see the little marker that I drew, but that's just a preference. So you are now going to tear little pieces of your flatfish off to resemble the fins 
Now, the word flatfish. Do you know what letter flatfish starts with? How about an F? Yeah, good job. So we're going to keep pulling away pieces of burlap to give it that textured look. While you're doing that, we have another question. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what are their favorite foods? What do they like to eat? What are their favorite foods? So flatfish love to eat shrimp. They love to eat crabs and sea urchins. Some of them even eat other littler fish because they can grow to be pretty big. They also love to eat squid and octopus. Thank you for the question. So I'm also going to trim a little bit off of here. Give it the flatfish shape. You can see nice and the tail, tail needs to spread out a little bit. But yeah, your flatfish body shape. So if you have googly eyes, I'd love for you to grab them. But if not, you can just take your marker. I'll show you. These are where my eyes are going to go. On the same side of its body, right? So if you don't have googly eyes, that's okay. But if you do, put some glue on here. One and two dots. While you're putting the eyes on, we actually have a question about the eyes. Absolutely. So Elijah would like to know, when they bury themselves in the sand, is, is, like how do they protect their eyes? How do they protect their eyes? Well, they just try and bury themselves as far down as they can. They can use their fins, like I was mentioning earlier, to flick the sand on top of them. And so they just try and hide so good and hide so far down in the sand that they should be able to still be safe and that their eyes should still be pretty covered by the rocks. But if they also can hide underneath rocks as well, then maybe they can only see like just a little bit, and then they're barely hidden. Thank you for the question. Do we have any other questions, Alex? Yeah, we actually got another one here. Awesome. Uh, so Naomi would like to know, how big can a flatfish get? Ooh, Alex, do you know that answer? I feel like they can get super big. Well, here in Alaska, people like to eat halibut. And I mean, like record halibuts are over 300, 400. I think there's some close to 500 pounds, oh but goodness. not necessarily, but, you know, way up there. They're not like 1,000 pounds. But, <laughs> They're but, not like our sea lions here? No, no, no. But oh like, my goodness. But like 400 pounds or so, that's a pretty wow. big flatfish. Wow. That's crazy. Thanks for the question, Naomi. So once you put your eyes on your flatfish and you have all of the fins ready to go, you can now send your flatfish off into the ocean and it can swim away. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. So during the week, I think a super fun science project that would be super awesome to do at home is to take a little bit of dish soap, which you probably have around your kitchen sink. And if you don't, maybe ask your parent where some would be. And if you take a little bit and you're gonna put some in your hand, I know, kind of crazy. You're gonna pour just a little bit in your hand. And you're gonna take your other hand and if you kind of pick up a little bit of the dish soap or even just rub it around your hand, you'll notice it's really slimy. Now, flatfish are really slimy. They have really small, smooth scales that are along their bodies, but they also have this layer of slime, and this slime protects them. During the week, if you can also think of some slimy things, that would be great too. Feel free to send them in to us either at asktuffy at alaskasealife.org or the phone number that's in the description below. That's it for today, you guys. I so enjoyed being with you here. We're live right on YouTube. I want to say thank you for joining, but also 
Do you think you can say thank you to the flatfish for being so cool to learn about? Can you say thank you with me? We'll do it on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you. And another quick thank you to the Alaska 529 plan for making this program possible here today. Next week, Rebecca will be back and she will be teaching all about salmon. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the book, Flossy Flounder, which will be playing right up next. Bye for now. Flossy Flounder, A Tale of Flat Fish by Suzanne Tate, illustrated by James Melvin. Flossy Flounder, A Tale of Flat Fish, written by Suzanne Tate, illustrated by James Melvin. Flossy Flounder was a flat fish. She was fat as well as flat. Flossie belonged to the flatfish family. Like all of them, she lived at the bottom of the sea. She liked to live there. Both of Flossie's eyes were on her top side. She could lie on the bottom and see everything good to eat swimming by. Flossie could change herself so that she looked like the bottom she was lying on. Can you find Flossie on this page? Great job! She's right here. You can see both of her eyes topside. When shrimp or little fish came along, she sprang to life and she grabbed a quick lunch. Floyd Flounder was Flossie's baby, but he didn't look like her. He swam upright. He was round and not flat. And he had an eye on each side of his head. What color is Floyd Flounder? That's right, he's green. One day Floyd was floundering around he was in a school of little flounders. They were catching tiny shrimp near a place called Green Island. The other little flounders were babies too, but they were older than Floyd. They had already become tiny flatfish. They swam on one side and both their eyes were topside. Can you count how many flounders are on this page? One, two, three, four. Thanks for counting with me. One eye, one eye, they called to Floyd. You're not fat, you're not flat. It made Floyd feel bad. He wanted to look like the other flounders. Why can't I be like the others? Floyd cried softly. He didn't want the other flounders to know. Flossie swam up to him. Don't worry, she said. You will soon be fat and flat. Both your eyes will be topside and you will begin to swim on one side. How can that ever be true? Cried Floyd. You will see, Flossie said. So Floyd swam away again in the school of baby flounders. He caught tiny shrimp and tried to be happy. Floyd was so busy that he didn't see the net. Can you find the net? Great job. A boy named Mark was sweeping it along the bottom. It 
It wasn't a big net, but Floyd was caught in it. What have I here? said Mark. A baby fish, just right for my aquarium. Mark scooped up Floyd and put him in a glass box. There was plenty of water and sand. There was grass to hide in, just like around Green Island. This is a nice place, thought Floyd at first. But something was fishy, something was wrong. When Floyd tried to swim fast, he bumped into something hard. He couldn't swim away. Floyd was trapped in Mark's aquarium. But it wasn't so bad. There were lots of tiny shrimp there to feed on. Mark kept Floyd well fed. Floyd began to grow fatter and wider. He leaned on one side until he was flat. One of his eyes moved. Then both of his eyes were topside. Mark enjoyed watching the changes in Floyd, but one day he decided to turn him loose. Goodbye, little fish, Mark said. Goodbye and thank you, said Floyd, but Mark didn't hear him. Floyd swam back to Green Island he soon found his mama Flossie. Look at me, he said proudly. I am fat, I am flat, and both of my eyes are topside. Now my friends in the school won't make fun of me. Flossie smiled. She was happy. Floyd was now flat as a flounder.